everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kara. It's great to have you here. Today we are going to be talking about minimal weight gain during pregnancy or a belly only pregnancy. Right now I am 38 weeks pregnant and I've gained about 21 pounds. So here's the side view. <laughs> um, so what is a belly only pregnancy? The goal isn't just to gain the weight of the baby in the placenta. It's definitely you have to gain some extra fat stores and you will gain some extra water weight, which is totally normal and healthy. But the goal is to gain that extra fat and water weight in a controlled manner and keep fit and healthy and active so that after you give birth, the weight will come off much easier. Water weight and fat stores, it's definitely very necessary especially during breastfeeding. So you will gain some extra fat, you will gain some extra water weight, perfectly natural and normal. The concept is just to keep healthy and fit and active so that after you give birth, you can lose it quite easily in a controlled manner, especially with breastfeeding, night sweats, or if you don't gain too much weight or extra weight or water weight, it'll just shut off naturally over time. So that's what the definition or our, the concept of a belly only pregnancy is. It's you will definitely gain some, some weight. Like I said, I've gained about 21 pounds. I'm 38 weeks pregnant. You'll definitely gain some extra fat stores and water, but it's in a controlled manner and you feel good so that afterwards it comes off easily. And everyone's different. Everyone gains weight differently. Every pregnancy is different. This is just my advice for what I did. Everyone is different. That's what makes the world go round. So don't feel bad if you do gain extra weight. That's perfectly normal. That's just life. Again, this is just what I did. So if you're interested in hearing about my minimal weight gain during pregnancy, then keep watching. All right, first is exercise. I think the easiest way to exercise during pregnancy is just getting those steps in and walking. So you can wear a Fitbit, Apple Watch, it can be an app on your phone. Uh, you can set reminders on your phone to walk, you can track your steps, whatever you want to do, just try to get those steps in. And it's actually pretty easy to get your steps in, uh, even if it's just running errands, cleaning up around the house, doing stuff around the house, walking, taking a break during TV and just walking around the house or going on walks. It does add up if you take breaks, take little walking breaks, set reminders, it will definitely add up. And I think walking is just easy, low impact, keeps you active, and it's just great for you. So I think the most important aspect for me was getting those steps in and continuing to walk. I'm clearly standing next to a treadmill, so I did use my treadmill a lot. Uh, nothing crazy, but I, I made sure that if I was gonna watch a show, maybe I would watch it while I was on the treadmill. All right, the other form of exercise would be strength training. I did do some strength training. You don't have to go crazy, but it's important to have that muscle tone because muscles naturally burn calories and you wanna be fit and strong for when you give birth. So I just recommend you can watch YouTube videos. I went to the gym, I did low impact strength training. So I did resistance training. I also did some weights, but instead of a high amount of weight, and low amount of reps. I did a lower amount of weights and a higher amount of reps. So I could keep up that muscle tone, but I wasn't doing anything strenuous or crazy. I don't think I did anything above 25 pounds, but, and I think my workouts were only about a half an hour, just about a half an hour. Maybe I did 15 to 20 minutes of strength training and then a 10 minute or 15 minute walk. Nothing crazy but I did make sure that I kept it up consistently. So if you can't afford to go to the gym, that's perfectly fine. Maybe watch some YouTube videos. They have a lot of great hit strength training videos. So you can get that cardio and strength training all in one. You can get it done in like half hour, 15 minutes, super easy. Or you can buy some lightweight dumbbells and just follow along, do some lightweight dumbbell exercises, but strength training, Combined with the walking, I barely did cardio. I did just did walking and strength training and that really worked for me. But if you already do cardio and you've done cardio before you got pregnant, 
feel free to keep it up. Just talk to your doctor, see what they have to say. I was definitely not a cardio person before I got pregnant, so I just, <laughs> I did not all of a sudden start doing cardio during pregnancy. I just stuck to walking and strength training and that seemed to really do the trick. Okay, the next aspect would be, of course, what you eat and food. So at first it was really difficult in the first trimester to eat anything that was nutrient dense. I basically could have bread and crackers and I had to eat it constantly uh, so that I wasn't, you know, because I was nauseous. But I found that downloading a food tracking app actually really did help because you could see right in front of you what you ate, what the nutrients were, and it kind of helped you, helped me to keep on top of things and it, and it um, tracked my water intake and it was just really useful for, uh, in the beginning, reminding me to eat and reminding me to eat nutrient dense food. And then in the second and third trimesters, it was helpful for me to watch the amount of calories that I ate. So I think a food app is really good, but also just be intuitive and listen to your body intuitively, uh, listen to your body for what it wants. So when I say nutrient dense foods, I mean uh, fruits, vegetables, lean protein, so you could eat a high volume, a good amount of it and feel full. And you get all those nutrients, but they're low in calories. So you can eat a bunch of veggies, a bunch of fruits, uh, I like ground turkey, chicken breast, tuna. Uh, salmon is not uh, lean because it's high in fats, but it's really good for you. So I ate a lot of salmon. And yeah, I would try to fill up my plate with a lot of that and then not deny myself of something that I wanted. So I really liked sweets or something salty. So I would still have just a little bit of that so I could satisfy that craving but I was feeling really full because I had a lot of those nutrient dense foods and the food app, uh, my food tracker app definitely helped to remind me to keep on top of that and keep doing that. Another good tip for feeling full was a fiber supplement. So I did take a fiber supplement mostly to help myself go to the bathroom, but it also helped fill me up. So I think fiber supplement was really great. And then nuts, uh, they are high in fat, but they're so good for you. So I would eat a handful of nuts that would hold me over, get those omega-3s, and they're super healthy. So it's just eating real foods, fruits, nuts, veggies, meats, just healthy foods that you purchase around the edge of the grocery store, right? You walk in, you can stay in the produce aisle, stay along the edge to the meats, and then stay along the edge to the dairy. So eat those healthy real foods, uh, track it in the food app, and stay active. I also ate more frequent meals, but smaller. So lots of frequent smaller meals throughout the day really helped keep me satisfied. And I wasn't starving by the time I got to dinner and just like eating a ton all at once. So I kept it consistent, which was really helpful. Okay, my final two bits of advice. This one is I don't want to sound harsh. I don't want to sound mean. I I hope this comes off the right way. Um, you're not eating for two, really. The baby's stomach is really small. It's like the size of a walnut. You're eating about an extra 200 or 300 calories a day. So I think the mindset of eating exactly double, like a double your meal so that you're eating for two. I don't think that's the best concept because you're not eating for two full-sized adults. You're eating for yourself and a baby. So yeah, you definitely want to eat extra calories for sure. You want to eat extra calories, but you're not eating double of what you're eating. You're just adding a little bit extra on. And lastly, just be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace. This is a crazy period in life so much is happening, so much is going on. There's only so much you can control, especially genetically speaking. There, there's only so much you can do. Give yourself grace, love yourself, understand that this is just part of the journey. If you gain more weight than you expected, that's okay because this that's just life and that's just how things go. And you'll be perfectly fine and your baby, as long as your baby is healthy, you're healthy, everything's gonna be okay no pressure at all to immediately snap back after you give birth either. That takes a lot of time. It took you a lot of time to get here. It'll take you a lot of time to get back there. Only if you want to, because 
It's whatever you want to do. This is just what I did. This is just my advice. So give yourself that grace and love and understand that you're doing something absolutely miraculous. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found my advice to be useful. If you're pregnant, congratulations. If you're trying to conceive, I'm here for you and I'm thinking of you. If you found this video to be useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to make my day. I'll see you next week. Bye.